Engineers from Amazon recently released AWS SDK for Java V2 after almost one year and a half since it was announced in the developer preview. So what's new in this SDK and why should we care? In version one of AWS SDK, all the operations were blocking. So even though you had usually one normal blocking client and then there was also async client, async client actually worked with thread pool in the background. It wasn't really possible to take the full advantage of reactivity introduced in Spring Framework 5 when we were dealing with AWS. New SDK changes that. In new SDK, we have non-blocking clients that use Netty under the hood, so we can really leverage the potential of reactivity introduced in Spring Framework 5 on AWS. Every asynchronous operation in the new SDK returns completable future. So if you want to make it work with React or you have to write a little bit of boilerplate by yourself, but there is a very easy way to convert from completable future to mono. You just have to make a mono from future and then provide a supplier that returns this completable future. Something worth noticing, there are two methods for mono from future and one of them takes just a completable future, another one takes the supplier. And the difference is that if we want to make the operation happen only on subscription, we have to use the latter. Another interesting change introduced in the new version of the SDK is that everything there is immutable. So whenever we send a request to put item into Dynamo table or, or I like literally anything, it's all immutable objects. Every object like that has a builder. So when we create them, we do, let's say, put item request dot builder, and then we specify all the parameters. And this makes a lot of sense when we care about having named parameters. This is what builders more or less give us, but it can become a little bit uh, boilerplate when we have just an object with a single parameter, but we still have to write this whole sequence of builder then set the property, then make a build. Other two features that are worth mentioning is that you can now choose your own HTTP client implementation. So you can just plug it in when you create a new AWS service client. And there is a built-in support for pagination. So if the AWS service returns a paginated response, then AWS SDK handles it automatically. So there is much, much less boilerplate to write by us. What is also cool is that new SDK can work side by side with an old one. So you can really gradually migrate your application from using SDK 1 to SDK 2. There are some things that are missing. And for me personally, the most painful one is the DynamoDB mapper. DynamoDB mapper comes with JPA kind of annotations for mapping your Java classes and then saving them to DynamoDB. In the new SDK, unfortunately, it's not yet there. So if we want to use DynamoDB, then we have to manually always map the Java classes to the request that IWS SDK understands. In the next video, I will show how to set it up with Spring Boot. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button down below. And if you want to learn more about Spring Java AWS, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.